Hello, gents. I am joined today by my friend Clyde. Clyde November. Thank you for joining me today. Clyde. Thank you for having me on the YouTube channel. This is uh, quite an honor. Yes, the honor is all mine. If you guys don't know yet, I don't know how you don't know this yet, but Clyde November and his wife Rosie have a podcast called I Love My Idiot. It's my favorite podcast, and I listen to it weekly when it comes out, so I'm really excited to team up with them. I'm actually here at the November home right now because we're about to record a podcast. Maybe by the time this video goes live, you've probably already listened to it, but if you haven't, I will put a, some links and things below so you guys can go find the November podcast. Oh, you're sporting the Joel Nurt shirt. I brought a gift for you today. Um, it's a little surprise for you. I want you to have this. Well, this is awkward. I didn't know we were exchanging gifts. It's not too late. After we're done filming, you can <laughs> give me something. Uh, also, I really enjoy the painter's tape there. It's, uh, you know, how I roll. Whatever tape sure. is closest. Sure. Well, thank you. By all means, please. Actually, maybe I should wait till I open it to thank you. <laughs> you know me so well. I know. I'm a little nervous. Something's going to jump out at me. Ooh, double wrapped. Double wrapped. Do you know what that is? <laughs> what? <laughs> the hell? <laughs> It's a wrench. This is not just any wrench, though. There is a big story behind this wrench. There is. This wrench. Oh, my god! When was the last time you saw that wrench? So it was almost. Exactly. Exactly. 14 years 14 ago? 14 years ago. I parted ways with this wrench. Now, there is quite a story with this wrench. <laughs> and to tell the story, we're going to actually have to back up a little bit before. Like a year before that. Oh, yeah. So we're in Iraq, and when we would, we'd go on missions all the time and things, but we had to do things to keep ourselves sane when our downtime. We would oh, play yeah. games, we'd do all kinds of things, but a staple of our behavior was playing pranks on each other. The thing that ended up happening is there was a certain theme of prank that, that kept reoccurring. And it was usually me and someone else, not Clyde, but me and Boomer, me and Phil, me and uh, whoever they were. just I would people. keep my hands clean. And so it would be like things going back and forth between us. The wrench, the wrench. The wrench actually happened between me and a different guy. And what we would do is, I don't know why it started, because this wrench was just sitting in our room. And we would like put it in each other's stuff. I would put it in his pillowcase. He would put it in my duffel bag. We'd like go back and forth and back and forth. We'd always find the wrench, and it wasn't even you. you at least I thought well, Clyde wasn't even a part of it, but... Here's the thing. I get bored. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, uh, I needed entertainment. I was serving my country, risking my life every day. And the one thing that really uh, kept me sane was watching this good man here exchange this wrench with someone else. And I don't know how many times you said, okay, I'm getting tired of this wrench thing. I'm, I'm just going to keep the wrench. And I would say, no, dude. You would always egg me on. Like the, yeah. when the prank was about to end, you're like, no, just keep it going. Keep I was like, going. you're going to let that guy win? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then it wasn't until much later that I found out that pretty much every prank, you were the mastermind behind. I was. You weren't involved Outwardly, I always kept my hands clean. But behind the scenes, he was egging on both people. I was, because I was bored. <laughs> and while he kept saying, I'm done with this prank, the other guys kept saying that too. And I'd be like, dude, come on, dude. So, you can't let him win. <laughs> so then it, it dawned on me one day. It was like, you know what? I'm not actually having these pranks with other people. They're all with Clyde, every single one of them. So I decided... Now I'm going to give the wrench to him, but I'm going to do it in an epic way. So fast forward to the very end of our deployment. We're leaving Iraq. We actually had to pass through Kuwait, and there were these sailors who were doing customs. And I got his duffel bag. I snuck this way down deep in the duffel bag, like underneath stuff and behind these folds and things where he would never see it. And he goes to the customs guy. He's emptying everything out of the bag. I'd already been through, and I'm like sitting there watching from the side. I'm just watching this whole thing unfold. And what happened to you? Now, once I emptied everything out of the bag, this was in some hidden pouch. So I didn't even find it. 
So I empty everything out of the bag and the sailor quickly rifles through everything and he says, oh, it's all good. And then he grabs my bag and squeezes it. And that's when he feels <laughs> something long, <laughs> hard. He's like, what is that? And, and I, I'm over at the side just trying not oh, to yeah. laugh. I said, what is what? He pulls the wrench out and I instantly start choking because I'm laughing so hard because I realize, oh my gosh, you just got me. <laughs> and he didn't even know that I had figured out that he was the mastermind no. of all the pranks yet. So when you pulled the wrench out and saw it was on you, like it all came flooding in. You're like, oh. It did. Man. Now, he was getting his bad checked like four stations over. But he wasn't even paying attention to his own bag. <laughs> He's sitting there like this the whole time. And the second I looked over at him, his face was as bright as a cherry. And he was just laughing so hard. I was so, so hard. happy. So why am I now giving the wrench well, back to you? Because here's the thing. The guy, first of all, he starts yelling at me because he's like, why are you trying to sneak a wrench into the States? And then I said, oh, I'm not. My friend's pranking me. This is a, just a prank or whatever. And so I told him, I was like, you can just keep the wrench. And he's like, no, specialist, I will not keep the wrench. And I'm like, dude, seriously, I don't want the wrench. And he's like, no, he's like, we're going to slap this tape on. You're going to write your name on the wrench. We're going to put it under the plane and then you can pick it up when we get back to Fort Lewis. And I was like, dude, I'm not picking the wrench up. And I just flat out told the guy, I was like, this is stupid. Just keep the wrench. Right? Now, here's the thing. Had I, we were allowed to take wrenches. Had I just. It's not a forbidden item. <laughs> no. Had I just emptied the wrench with all the other stuff. He wouldn't have said one word, but the fact that he thought I was trying to smuggle the wrench for some reason, <laughs> it really upset him. By the time we landed in Washington State, I said, you know what? I'm getting the wrench. This is not over. So I went and got the wrench and then I was like, okay, somehow, some way, I'm going to plant this back on his stuff. And then I found the wrench two weeks ago. I'm going through this bag two weeks ago. And I'd use this bag a lot. Like I used it for hiking. It used to be my shooting bag. I'd keep ammo and like ear earplugs and eye protection stuff in this. And I never knew that it was an extra like pound or two heavier than it should have been until about two weeks ago, I was going through it and I was digging deep in it and I felt something hard and I pulled this out and I was like, what? This is from 14, 15 years ago. I finally found it. I started laughing so hard. <laughs> you didn't even know that you got me. And I would tell people the wrench story all the time because I thought it was so funny, but I thought the story was over. I thought it was the wrench was still in Kuwait, that that sailor had stole it. But no, you slipped it back in my bag and you waited for 14 years for me to find yes. it. And I did, and now it's yours. You have no idea how many times I've asked him, hey, have you ever unloaded all your army stuff? You know, <laughs> You've just been waiting. Haven't I've you? been waiting and this has been killing me. And I also have told a million people the wrench story and people always say, well, has he found the wrench? And I'm just like, I'm sorry. This is a story without a good. You thought ending. it was ended, right? You didn't think I would ever find I it. I was point. convinced you would never find it. Well, I never thought it even still existed, but it does still exist. It is now the ball is in your court, and I hope I never see the wrench again, but something tells me I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, guys, that's our uh, that's our wrench story. Thanks for tuning in today and watching the wrench story. Thank you, Clyde, for being my, uh, my prank friend and helping me get through that deployment with your chicanery. Uh, the real question... <laughs> How many wrenches can you fit in your beard? Ooh. I'm guessing that's going to rip some that's hair gonna out. Be, I'm going to give that a big zero because this ain't staying in. All right. See you soon, gents. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to tune in to I Love My Idiot podcast to hear Clyde and his wife, Rosie. They have a weekly podcast, and I'm on it as of right now.